In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the development environment for the BlueCube mobile apps. With this environment, you will be able to modify the apps to meet your needs and then deploy them to your own mobile device. To start with, go to the BlueCube website and then go to the development environment page. Now this page contains all of the steps that I'm going to demonstrate during this video. So if you ever get stuck, you can refer to the text of this page. To start the install, we need to set up the Ionic platform, which is what the mobile device, the mobile apps are built using. It requires Node.js, so let's go and download that. We need the version 4 version, not the version 5. So we'll click and download Node.js. Now that it's installed, uh, downloaded, sorry, we'll just go and install it. So just accept the license like you would. We'll just do a standard install. Enter your credentials and we'll let it finish. Now, it mentions that we need to make sure that uh, user local bin is in your path. So let's actually go and check that. So we'll launch terminal. And I'll just make the uh, terminal window a bit bigger for us. Cool. And we'll echo path and user local bin is there. So that's uh, cool. So we can close the Node.js install. Now that it's done, uh, we need to install Cordova. So I'm just going to copy this. And again, this runs through terminal. So we've already got that open. So I'll just paste it in. And Cordova is now installed. So now we need to install uh, Ionic. So again, we'll copy the install instruction. We'll paste it in. Just as happened with Cordova, we're now in the background. It's uh, downloading the, the required components. And then it'll run uh, an install. OK, Ionic is now installed. Now. Ionic on a Mac also needs some of the command line tools that come as part of Xcode. So the simplest way to get those installed is that we'll just run the Ionic command and it's going to ask us. So yep, we will install these, we'll accept the agreement. It's now going to go and download these tools from Apple. And those command line tools have now been successfully installed. So we can click done. We'll scroll down, keep going down. Um, now we just need to do XML to JS. So again, it's the same as the others. Just run that installer. And that's now been installed as well. So that's now the all the components we require for Ionic to work. So that's installed Cordova, XML to JS, and the Ionic framework. Now, you've got two options on a Mac. You can install Xcode, which will enable you to build and modify the iOS app, or you can install the Android Studio and associated tools, which will allow you to install and modify the Android app. During this video, I'm actually going to show you how to do both, and we'll start with the iOS support. So to do that, we need to install Xcode. So we'll just click the link. It's taken us to the Mac App Store to the Xcode page. So we just want to get that, and we want to install it. Now you'll need to enter your Apple ID. And password. Okay. 
And if you've got two-factor authentication on, it'll prompt you for the key, which I do. So I'll just give us a moment while that comes through. Add to the two-factor verification. And we'll now go through and allow Xcode to start to install. And we'll check the password again. So let's just try this once more. Ah, yep. Here we go. Oh, this is the first time we've run it on this machine, so you get a couple extra prompts. But we'll let Xcode install. Now, the Xcode install, as you can see, is relatively large at uh, about four and a half gig, and will take a little while to download. So I'm just going to skip through it forward to when it's complete. Xcode's finished downloading. It's now installing. The installation takes a little while, so please be patient while that occurs. Cool. Xcode's now finally installed. So we can quit the... Uh, we can quit the App Store and go back to Safari. So now it's uh, worth our while actually just launching Xcode, which has now ended up in the Applications folder. So to do that, we'll launch Xcode, agree to the license terms, our details. Xcode will install a couple of required components and just finish the setup. And Xcode will finally launch. With that done, we can now actually quit Xcode. We go back to the, the browser. We've also uh, got iOS SIM to install. That's just done via terminal again, like we've did for Ionic and the other. Try our password. Again, this is just downloading the components in the background and then installing them. That's now done. And also iOS deploy. So we'll grab those and again, same as before. Uh, the instructions we're using here have been tailored specifically for 10.11. That's now been successfully installed. So with that, we now have all of the components required to do iOS uh, app development through Ionic. And we can now uh, modify and deploy the BlueCube app to our device. I'm now going to move on to how to do the Android support. So for the Android environment, we need to have the Java development kit. Now, it's typically not the standard version of Java that you'd have installed on your machine. So we'll go to its website. Uh, the development kit 7 is OK, noting that it's going out of support. We need to accept the license, and once it's done, we can find the version that we need for our platform and click to download it. The JDK has now downloaded, so we can now go and install it. So we'll mount the disk image, run the installer, Do the standard install steps. And that's now installed. So we can go back to the BlueCube website. So the JDK is now done. Now we need to install the Android Studio. 
So we'll go to the website for it, download, accept the license. Now that Android Studio's downloaded, uh, we can install it. You'll note that uh, Google redirects you to a page with some more information, but I've also got additional steps on the Bluecube website, so we'll follow those. So what we'll do is we'll mount the disk image, and once it's done, as it suggests, we'll drag Android Studio to the Applications folder. Let's finish copying that. We can go to the Applications folder. I'll just close these disk images that aren't required anymore. And if we scroll to the top, we've got Android Studio. So I'm just going to double click that to launch it. Yep, OK. And we've now got a series of setup steps as such. I haven't got any previous settings, so just OK on the default there. And now we've got a install setup wizard that runs, so we'll just go next. A standard install is fine for what we need. So we'll go next again. Uh, pay attention to this destination folder, you'll need it later. But otherwise, click finish. And we just need to now allow this to download additional components that are required. When prompted, you can add your details for the HAXM install. It's used for the emulator. Now, we don't actually use the emulator, but it is installed as part of the Android And the install's done. Now, you will actually notice the HAXM install failed on this machine. It's actually because I'm doing it in a virtual machine and I don't have the items set up for it. That's not actually a problem. As long as the rest looks good, we're fine to continue. So we'll go finish. And Android Studio's now um, running. This is the normal welcome screen. We can actually quit this now. Now we also need to do some setups in the terminal so that the Ionic tools are aware of the Android Studio location. So this is of course down, uh, outlined on the Blue, Hub, Blue Cube website. So if we'll go back to terminal. Now we need to modify the bash profile. So we'll bring that up. It's an empty file on this machine. If you've got content on it, just make sure you add this detail to the last line in the file. And we also need to change the references where it's got user to my user short name. This is the value that I pointed out earlier in the install that we needed to pay attention to. So on this machine, it's Adam. So just make sure you update it twice. Adam, that's all cool. Uh, we'll go to the end of the line there, just make sure there's a new line. We'll save this by hitting Control O for orange. We'll hit Enter, that file's fine. And then we'll hit Control plus X to exit. Now that's done, we just need to tell the system to launch it, which is this source command. So that is now done. So we can continue. Uh, actually, a good way of checking that is like we did the echo path command before. So if I go echo dollar path, you'll now see there's uh, Android entries there. So we also need to do the final setup with the SDK. So to do that, we run the Android command line tool. You can type it in or copy and paste. This will grab uh, the latest uh, details from 
the Google servers and we need to install some of the items under Android 5.1.1. So, oh, I just, uh, no, that's all cool. Sorry, so I'll scroll down, Android 5.1, so we expand that. We need to make sure the SDK platform is installed. And that should be it. We're not actually going to use any of the rest. So I'm just going to have a look at uh, the uh, packages to install. This looks fine. Um, actually, I've accidentally clicked a few of these that I don't really need, so I'll actually just go back and I don't need the Android TV or the Android Wear. Um, you can leave the system images if you want, that helps when running the local debugger, but BlueCube doesn't actually work under the local debugger because it can't access the Bluetooth commands. So you can test the app, but you can't talk to the cube. So I'll leave those on. The rest looks fine. So we'll run that. We'll pick one of these. We'll accept the license. These should now all be green. They are. We'll click install. So it's now going to download and install these. This will just take a moment. And those items are now installed. That's all we need through here. Um, we should be all good. And we can now um, quit. And with the Android SDK item installed, that is everything we need for the development environment for BlueCube for both iOS and Android mobile apps installed. The next video in this tutorial series will actually show you how to build and deploy your app to your mobile device. But until then, thank you for watching.